you are very operator dependent here. You're on a one-to-one -one basis with most of these deals to where $1 is going towards one uh, single asset. So you're really trusting the operator that they know how to operate that and trusting that the operator can execute on their business plan to be able to provide you that return. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. All right, we're talking about crowdsourcing and many of you have heard of Fundrise or CrowdStreet and this is just, I think, in the gig economy, it's an ability to get into re rental real estate or whatever real estate investments. That's why we have Matt Ford here who's going to actually break this down. But Matt, we're in a series on real estate. I think a lot of people watching this um, want to get involved in some way. And so we've looked at like single family homes, multifamily homes, you know, and all types of different strategies that can happen uh, as it relates to investing in real estate. And it's crazy to me because I've had multiple people, multiple people in the last couple months text me or reach out to me and say, hey, have you heard of Fundrise? I'm like, yes, <laughs> I have. Uh, what do you think? And so they've obviously been doing something as it relates to marketing. And so I'm, I'm excited to see the pros and cons and you break down uh, this asset and if someone should look into it. Yeah, so crowdfunding is really a uh, general operator in real estate needs to raise funds to do a project, whether that's development, or they want to um, buy a property and they just don't have the investor database to go execute on it. They go to these platforms who have a bigger investor database and say, we wanna raise this amount of money. And the CrowdStreet and Fundrise are really just brokers in between the operator and the investor. So really some of the benefits of this is there's a low cost of entry. Yeah. So if you're out there listening today and you want to get involved in real estate, but you don't want to meet operators, you don't want to go find properties, you don't want to manage properties, but you know you want to get involved in real estate, one of these platforms could be an option for you to invest money alongside of an operator trying to do a bigger deal on a grander scale. Um, the second real benefit I see in these types of platforms is it helps you diversify away from the different asset classes and properties that you may have today. So I know a lot of folks out there that have a ton of residential real estate, but they want to get involved in, in, in industrial real estate. I know folks out there that do uh, multifamily, but they want to do development. And these types of platforms allow you to kind of uh, diversify your portfolio into different niches with inside the real estate niche as a whole. The And this could be a pro and it could also be a con, but I, I feel like if you're accredited, you can obviously have access to this, but can you have access to certain deals if you're not accredited? So it depends. When we really talk about accreditation, there's two different funds. I think there's a 506B and a 506C. And a 506B means that you have to know that person and you have to be accredited. A 506C means that you can advertise, but they, they can't be, uh, but they have to be accredited. So I'm sorry. 506B means that you know that person, but they don't necessarily have to be accredited. 506C means that you can advertise, but you have to make sure they're accredited when they're coming through the door. And both of these platforms offer both of those options. It just depends on the deal. So, Okay. So, and again, if you're not accredited, um, you might think real estate's really attractive, but some of the cons is it's not super liquid. Yep. Is that is that one of the cons to this? Yeah. So there's a couple of different cons for these platforms. One, it's not a liquid investment. So most of these investments have a three, five, seven year time frame, and you can't go onto the New York Stock Exchange and say, "Hey, I own a share in this building downtown, and I yep. want to sell it." I mean, it once you put money into these types of investments, really are at the mercy of the operator on how they distribute capital, when they distribute capital, and when you can ex expect your money back. Um, so I guess another con there is you are very operator dependent here. You're on a one-to-one -one basis with most of these deals to where $1 is going towards one uh, single asset. So you're really trusting the operator that they know how to operate that and trusting that the operator can execute on their business plan to be able to provide you that return. Um, and then the last one I would say is I am an accredited investor. I'm going out there and I'm meeting operators and I'm really getting FaceTime with these operators and I'm understanding what makes them tick. I'm understanding their nuances of their business plan and I have access to them. If I invest in a deal, I can call them up tomorrow and say, hey, where are we at? What's going on with this? They typically provide monthly and, 
and quarterly reports and things like that. Uh, on these platforms, you'll know who the operator is. It will tell you who the operator is. It will tell you who the company is. But I think that your access is going to be a little bit limited. So I, I personally have never invested in one of these because I know operators outside of outside of these platforms in these spaces. Um, and you probably could get a hold of one of these operators if you said, hey, I invested in CrowdStreet and they invested in one of your projects. Um, but I would say that your access to them is very, very limited. What are what are the type of people that you would recommend looking at this and what kind of investment rate of return are we looking at here? Because I, I feel like you, if you can go to the peer source, you're going to get a better rate of return because Fundrise and all these companies have to take something off. Um, but you're also, they're just, I, I feel like there's multiple people in, in the game, but at the same time, it's a way for you to get in with less than 50 to 100K and that's usually the that's usually the the minimum investments to getting into bigger deals. Yeah, so I wish I had a straight answer for you. It it really depends, right? If you're buying an A-class property that's brand new and it's in downtown uh, Orlando or downtown Miami or something, you know, one of these big metropolitan areas, you're probably looking at a four percent rate of return, and then they're going to help you help you participate in the appreciation. So it's more of an appreciation play. I've seen uh, funds on these types of websites that it's purely development. So they haven't even broken ground yet. So you're giving them money to help with the construction cost. And in five years, they're going to give you double or triple your money back, but you're not going to see a dollar of that in, over the next five years. And that's what I mean, you're operator dependent. Like that's a pretty risky move for someone you don't know personally that you would just give them $100,000 and trust that they're able to operate on a business plan. I'm not saying it's a bad move. I'm just saying like you just have to know your risk tolerance. Um, and then I've seen stable funds that like you're just going to go buy a typical B class property in five minutes outside of Denver or another major metropolitan area, and you can expect anywhere between five and twelve percent on your money. I, I know that you're careful not to give any advice or even uh, even you're careful with opinions, but who who should look into this and who should stay away? Um, I think it depends. So. I would say who should look into this people that know they want to get involved in real estate, but don't want to spend the time developing one on one relationships with operators, because all these platforms are doing is syndicating funds. All they're doing is raising funds for operators. And if you have the ability to go meet some of these operators face to face, you get a sense of who they are, you get a sense of their track record, you get a sense of what they're trying to accomplish. And in these forums, they do a good job. Like you get a you get a webinar and you get a prescript perspectives, you get a PPM that you can read through and kind of understand where they are at and things like that. But there's something about sitting down for lunch with one of these operators and really truly getting to know them that I don't know, sometimes I feel I walk away feeling better about where my money is knowing that so who should get into it people that know they want to get involved in real estate, but don't have the time or really the desire to go build those kind of operators. We're in a real estate series here with better wealth with Matt Ford. Do you want to talk a little bit about your podcast and why if you're into real estate, you should go with ice cream with investors and subscribe? Yeah, absolutely. So the podcast is ice cream with investors. And really, this series is similar to what I'm trying to do with the podcast. We're looking at all different niches in real estate because I believe real estate is one of the most powerful generational wealth building tools out there. It is not the only strategy you should pursue, but it is definitely a portion of your financial picture. Um, so we bring in people that maybe are from CrowdStreet or maybe from some of these operators. Maybe they do fix and flips. Maybe they do hard money and things like that. And we really just kind of go through their business model, what they see as the benefits and allow them to give us some of their knowledge back. So go check it out if you're interested in real estate, but don't know where to start or go check it out if you're into real estate and you're in a specific niche and you want to learn more about other operators in that niche and maybe steal a couple best practices from them. I love it. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.